Hey guys, Dr. Ryan Lowry coming to you here from ketogenic.com. I want to talk to you about six reasons why you might not be losing weight on a ketogenic diet. And so the first one's pretty simple. Uh, we often use the term weight and people get hung up on weight. But the thing is the scale doesn't measure progress because if you think about it, you can be gaining muscle and losing fat mass at the same time. So if I gain two pounds of muscle and I lose two pounds of fat, the scale wouldn't change, but my body changes. So stop comparing your weight all the time and stop tracking each and every day. So that's number one. Number two is you're eating like a bodybuilder. I eat anywhere between eight to 10 meals a day. I eat every two hours. I know a lot of times in the keto world, we talk about intermittent fasting and fasting, and that's great. And I think there's a lot of tools for that. But some people who embark or some people who start a ketogenic diet for the first time might just take how they used to be eating and start eating the same way, just with ketogenic macros. And they are eating all the time. And so that's one of the things that I'd recommend is try incorporating in intermittent fasting, try incorporating in some of these fasting techniques and that'll really help jumpstart your progress. The other one is we actually have another video on this that I highly recommend you guys check out is you're putting butter in your coffee. I, I, I checked my, my, my blood last night, it wasn't doing so hot, so I heard to get a ketosis, I had to drink this butter coffee. Are you gonna have a breakfast after this? Yeah, this is only my drink, of course Dude, I do. We gotta explain this, man. Dude. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. In essence, it's you're consuming too much fat for unnecessary purposes, right? If you're putting an entire stick of butter inside your coffee, you're eating a ton of calories that don't really contribute to overall benefit of any other nutrients. And I'm not saying that bulletproof coffee or some of these fat coffee techniques aren't beneficial. Um, they certainly are, and I think they, they have their place. Um, but putting a ton of butter or putting a ton of fat or oils in certain things, it adds density, doesn't add volume. And so you're eating a lot of calories, but that might not make you completely full by doing so. So just make sure you keep it in context and don't have a ton of butter or oils or things all at one time. The fourth one is you're not moving enough. And a ton of people can get benefits of a ketogenic diet by just eating a ketogenic diet. That's been shown and a lot of people have reported that but you can really accelerate and take your, your adaptations to the next level by just moving. And of course, if you wanna incorporate in resistance training or high intensity interval training, that's great, that's ideal. But even just going on a 10 minute walk after each and every meal can make the world of a difference because not only can it lower blood glucose levels, but over time, research has shown that even walking may increase the transporters that are needed to take up and utilize ketones. So it can certainly help with that process. The fifth one is that you're simply just not in ketosis. And one of the things that a lot of people forget about is they let sneaky carbohydrates kind of sneak up and hinder their progress. So sometimes you might get people that report back and be like, oh, I didn't know a banana wasn't keto friendly or, oh, I'm having some of these sugar-free candies, which we talked about in another video, that ultimately they're having each and every day that are having a glucose response, are having an insulin response, and are hindering them from truly optimizing their state of ketosis. So just make sure you're monitoring that occasionally. Don't get hung up on it every single day. There's no need to track each and every day unless you're doing it for some therapeutic condition or you're really trying to dial it in. But otherwise, just make sure you're monitoring it and saying, all right, well, I understand that these foods may trigger a little bit of glucose or insulin response and these may not. Um, so just make sure you're keeping that in context. And the last one is that you're stressed. A lot of people often underestimate the psychological component of what's going on and how that plays into overall physiology. But when you're stressed, cortisol is really high and cortisol triggers glucose and insulin and hinders fat from being broken down. And so chronically elevated stress isn't good. So do some type of meditation, do some type of journaling, go outside, get in nature, decrease that stress. And I promise you'll start seeing some of these benefits and start seeing some of these gains. So I hope those six tips and some of those six techniques can really help jumpstart your progress or prevent you from stalling out or not seeing any progress on a ketogenic diet. 
and let us know below, comment and let us know what other things are preventing you that you think may be preventing you from seeing progress or things that you've changed in your ketogenic lifestyle that have really helped accelerate and take it to the next level. Appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching this video. I know a lot of people have been asking about these t-shirts. Check the link in the description. We'll, we'll post that link for you guys to get access to these t-shirts that we just recently launched. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure that you don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this video. And we love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.